ministry also on Sunday to accidents that claimed quite a number of lives. Now the death toll, death toll of people who perished in a fire after a fuel tank exploded at a Chambura village in Rubirizi district on Sunday evening had by last evening risen to 23. According to the district police commander, Mr. Frederick Higuira, they expect that the number is set to rise as more bodies are being removed or re re actually being removed from the rubble and wreckage. Now another 10 perished in an accident that involved a YY bus and a commuter taxi at Bukonte village and this happened in Namutumba district still on Sunday evening. This numbers add to the statistics provided by the annual police traffic report that indicates 10 people die every day due to road accidents. So much has been said about road safety, but little is known among many road users about motor third party insurance. So this morning we have an expert and experts to actually tell you what you need to know about the third party insurance, what your rights are, what your responsibilities are as a passenger and where to turn to for compensation in case an accident occurs or in case you are involved in a road accident in one way or another. So this morning I'm joined by Miss Mariam Nalunkuma. She is the communications officer, communications boss at the IRA Uganda. This is the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda. Thank you so much for making time and welcome to Morning Attend TV. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. Next to her is uh, Mr. Sam Bambaza. He is the team leader at Hope for Victims of Traffic ha Accidents, yes, yes, right here in the country. Thank you so much for making time and welcome to Morning at 10 TV. Thank you. All right, at this point in time, is it okay for us to take a moment of silence just to respect them that um, lost their lives in two, these two accidents that happened on Sunday evening? May their souls rest in eternal peace. All right, so I think I'll start with um, Mr. Bombaza. Just for you to tell us what the burden looks like. We're saying that every single day we're losing 10 people. We were having a conversation about malaria yesterday, and it's, um, still the bosses say there at the Ministry of Health that you're still losing 10 people every single day to malaria. But it's the same number with regards to accidents. Why is this? You're the one who rep represents the voice of accident victims. What do they tell you, and what are the voices that you're hearing about road accidents in Uganda? Thank you very much. Uh, it is very unfortunate <coughs> that we still lose innocent lives on our roads, and uh, most of these ones are innocent in the sense that uh, most of these uh, crashes affect them uh, by some of the reckless drivers, and. Uh, we have lost a number of bread earners, and this also attributes to the number of orphans mm -hmm. and uh, some of uh, others who may not be able to, uh, to some of them <coughs> that may not be able to cater for their families. Uh, also, uh, issues concerning with the economy uh, in terms of uh, these images does not promote the, it affects also uh, the tourism industry as a sector mm -hmm. because uh, we do not be able to attract some tourists. They do not be interested to, to visit in a safe country. So it's a big problem. It's a very big problem. And you're saying that um, the key cause, the root cause of all this is recordless driving. Uh, there are many factors that contribute uh, to, to these accidents. It is unfortunate that uh, our country hasn't invested so much in SARA corrosion investigation, where we would have prevention-based investigation. Okay. So we have cases of where by find somebody is driving while on the phone, somebody maybe is driving, drunk driving, uh, maybe it's fatigue. Mm -hmm. Those are the areas we have not investigated. All right, okay. And today we are trying to see that, hey, all right, we, um, the authorities that are involved will do something. We hope that they will do something for us to bring down the numbers of accidents on our roads. But the other critical conversation is what happens then to these victims? Is there compensation for them? And this is where Mariam comes in from uh, the Insurance Regulatory Authority. Mariam, most of the vehicles on our roads are on third-party insurance coverage. 
um, just a, a nutshell. We can say a drop <laughs> in the ocean um, go for comprehensive insurance. Um, maybe we can start from there. What is the difference between a third party insurance cover and a comprehensive one? Okay, thank you so much. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, we still have a number of these accidents happening on our roads. And uh, it's still very unfortunate that uh, a number of the victims that are involved in these accidents uh, rarely get compensated. One, it's mainly because many people don't know what third party is and um, many don't know how to claim. And others have tried claiming and probably have, have failed to get the compensation. Mm -hmm. But uh, probably it's because they don't know the procedures. Now, from, start, from the start, who is the third party? Uh, in the motor third party insurance cover, there is a first party. Now the first party is the owner of the vehicle. There is a second party. The second party is the insurance company. Now the owner of the vehicle moves into the insurance company and gets into a contract that in the event my car gets involved in an accident and there are passengers injured in my car or on the roadside, they should be paid, they should be compensated, and those are the third parties. Mm -hmm. Now, when government was framing the motor third party um, law, this was in 1989, the, the rationale was to help producers that they get compensated. And these are the third parties. The third parties are mainly the passengers, they are those pedestrians on the road, and the law is not compensating for property damage. Okay, so it's just for victims. For victims and uh, it is for bodily injuries. Okay. Now, I told you that uh, the biggest challenge that we have in people understanding what motor third party is, many people who have bought motor third party insurance cover expect the insurance companies to also compensate them for the vehicles that have been damaged. Mm -hmm. The motor third party insurance in place today is only meant to compensate the accident victims. And these are the passengers, Correct. these are the road users, but it does not compensate for the damage of the cars that are involved in the accident. Let me ask you this before you even clarify what the comprehensive insurance uh, package really is all about. Yes. Why do we have that uh, misconception then? Is it that uh, the insurance companies are not doing their bit in terms of informing, you know, their customers, the premium payer, about what third party is all about? Yes, I think where the biggest challenge is um, many people when they're buying motor third party, mm -hmm. they're in a hurry to have it on their cars. So when someone walks into um, a motor third party agent shop, they just want to get that sticker and put it on their vehicles. They don't ask what the benefits are. But Mariam, should true, it be the responsibility true, of the true, buyer they, they, or the insurance company? The responsibility lies with the insurance company yes. to fully inform their clients at the time of selling. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is not happening. And now, as we speak today, we shouldn't go into what has not been done. We now want to inform the public on what should be done and what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. So if you go and buy a motor third party sticker, please and please ask that insurance agent in the event that the accident happens, what should I do? Yes, you're in a hurry to have this sticker on your car, but you have a right to also um, be given this information because mm -hmm. it is this information that will help you at the time the accident has happened and your claim. Correct. Because if you don't have this information, that's why you find that uh, many people are not claiming. And that's the reason I told you that many people have paid motor third party insurance, but they are not claiming. And why? Probably because they don't know. All right. So the comprehensive cover? And then for the comprehensive cover now, comprehensive is, is really comprehensive. Like you hear the word comprehensive. Now for the comprehensive cover, uh, one, it, cover, it also includes the motor third party. 
but most importantly, it includes uh, property damage in the car in the event that the car is also destroyed, mm -hmm. in the event that uh, it is a fire that has affected uh, the, the car, like the fuel tank that we saw in Rubirizi, mm -hmm. in the event that uh, it has been stolen, in the event that uh, it is a windscreen that has been damaged. Basically, the comprehensive insurance is more compounded. It has more to cover than the motor third party. The motor right. third party is statutory. In Uganda, we have two statutory insurance covers. We have the workers' compensation and the motor third party insurance. And these are the ones that government then yeah. thought that should be protecting the citizens of Uganda. All right, okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> the information gap is clearly there. Yeah. If you stand today, and if I ask you this question today, you are a voice of the victims of accidents here in the country. How many of those would stand confidently and say that I have gone through the claiming process, I understand what it's all about, and I've gotten what is rightfully <coughs> mine? How many of these? Uh, for our case, we have been, for almost two years, we have been able to help about uh, 10 to 15 to have successfully been compensated by insurance. In two years? In two years, but uh, the challenge is is that uh, there are some of issues, especially accessing the traffic police report is the one of the biggest challenge, <laughs> and most of these crashes don't happen in our own areas. You may find uh, the accident happened in Aroa, but so happens that I come from Kisoro. Correct. So once uh, I'm, I'm, let's say I'm lucky and I'm admitted in Mulago, and after I'm being discharged from Mulago, I may not find, I may, I may have to go back to my home area, Kisoro. So in order to pursue this process of motor side pattern, you must go back to where the accident scene happened, the nearest police station where the accident happened, then you get the traffic police report. Mm -hmm. So imagine somebody traveling from Kisoro to Arua where accident happened. Then by the time when you reach there, sometimes the accident report is not usually in, um, ready. Mm -hmm. So it discourages some of the victims that are so necessary. Do this. you feel over and above that, do you feel like the information gap is also one of the root causes as to why we are having many victims um, go uncompensated? Yes, uh, most of the most of uh, the public are very ignorant about uh, this uh, third party compensation, and then um, the challenge of, of this bureaucracy, even uh, uh, issue of payment, because have been hospitalized for one year or six months, so I may not be able to afford that fee, Correct. eighty thousand. So in other countries like Benin and Cameroon. Uh, once there is a, any accident, the, the traffic police is processed and then the victims can access it via insurance. Okay. So it becomes very easy so that I don't need to travel from my home area to where the accident happened. All so right. I can approach it through the insurance. Can company. that be a reality for us, Mariam? <laughs> um, one thing about the police report, mm -hmm. uh, whenever an accident happens, the first person to get at the scene is the police. And uh, the purpose of getting a police report is quite clear. One, um, when you're in the vehicle, you don't take time to know whether this vehicle is insured or not. Mm -hmm. Now, the police report clearly states that this vehicle was insured with Company A. So for any accident victim, that is the starting point for them to know which company they will go to for compensation. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the police report, it becomes very hard for someone to try and dig out information on how they can get the compensation. All right. But two, the police report also lists the number of victims. Because when an insurance company is going to settle a claim, they need to know who is going to be compensated. Mm -hmm. They need to know it is Mala, they need to know it is Sam, they need to know it is Mariam. And these names come out clearly 
in the police report. Now, for someone to just walk in insurance company A right. with no evidence that you are part Involved. of the accident right. victims, then the insurance company would see a flock of people just walking into their companies. I also need compensation. I was also involved. But the police report basically, and that is actually the main reason as to why police is involved. Okay. Many people usually tend to think that a motor third party is for police. Actually, some people don't pay because they fear police stopping them. Mm. The purpose of police in motor third party is to enforce the law. They want to see that the vehicles on the road have motor third party All because right. it is by law. It's like having a permit. Correct. The reason they stop you from uh, driving is to see that you're the you're eligible to drive. So the police report is very critical for the victim, but most importantly for even the insurance company to start the claim process. Okay, and we do have this particular um, kind of image that we want to use in this particular discussion. My director will put it up for you. So you can, uh, you know, kind of see practically what the step-by-step -step claiming process looks like. So we've already tackled step one which is make sure that you get a police report. Yeah. I'll ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So most of the times when we have accidents, it's between car X or vehicle X and vehicle Y. And because of the laws of the land, these two vehicles have, a majority have, you know, the third party insurance coverage. So I'm a victim of this accident mm -hmm. that occurred between let's just take two cars car X and Y both insured have third-party coverage mm -hmm. so as a victim of the two where will I get my benefits of if in this particular police report which um, insurance company will be indicated in my claim process the first one, the police report. Two, yes. two, two vehicles, two insurance companies. Let's say maybe they're different insurance companies. Where do I lie? Is it in the vehicle that I was in, that I was aboard, or is it I can claim one? for the two? No, no, <laughs> you can't claim for the two. It is one vehicle. And uh, practically, you can't be traveling in two vehicles. They and of course, the police will clearly indicate, and that's the essence of the police report. Mm -hmm. It will show that vehicle X had five people, and these are the people. Um, they usually get eyewitnesses. They usually come and get out these bodies from the wreckage. So all those details are in the police report. That's why he, my, my colleague was saying sometimes it takes long mm -hmm. to get this police report. But uh, the beauty about the police report is that uh, even when you go to police to get this police report, um, it costs 84000 to get this police report. Mm -hmm. Now this 84000 is part of the compensation that the insurance company will pay you in addition to all the other expenses. Just make sure you have your receipt because when you go to get that police report from police, they will definitely give you a receipt. So, Mariam, I will be compensated under the insurance cover of the vehicle I was in. Yes. So, let's allay this myth or misconception. It's not about the vehicle that was in the wrong. It's about no. the vehicle that no. I was in. No, yes. Actually, motor third party is not a, it's, it's, it's a no-fault cover. No fault means that uh, whether the person was in the wrong, whether he was drunkard, whether the person was, um, was over speeding, that is not the problem. Motor third party is there to help the accident victim because the accident victim is not the one who was driving. Correct. The accident victim was not the one who was drunk. So it's a no fault insurance cover. Does it cover the driver? No. Good. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. What maybe she had may forgotten is that uh, in most cases, if the vehicle involved was uh, you were driving the family, but the family I think is not catered under the yes. motorcycle party. So it caters for the paid up passengers or a pedestrian. So if you are driving and uh, it is part of your family, so the part of your family will not be so this, under this. This act. cover is just beneficial to. Passengers, yeah. and uh, PSV, yeah. and pedestrians. And pedestrians. And pedestrians yes. Yes. So if it's you and your family, sort yourselves out. Yeah, uh, purpose is um, by the time they were framing this law, 
they thought, uh, for example, the driver um, is working. So that time they thought probably this person is being provided by workers' compensation. Mm -hmm. So the workers' compensation is providing is provided for workers. So this driver is working. So it's the workers' compensation that should take care of this person, okay, all right. not the motor third party. Correct. Right. Okay. So we are done with step one. Make sure that you get a police report, yeah. and you'll get it at eighty-four thousand Uganda shillings, which yes. will be under your compensation. Yes. Of course, that's the chart that you're seeing right there on your screen. So we can go together, um, you, the viewer, and right here uh, with us in studios. Step number two. So, so before we go from the practical point of view, uh -huh. uh, the victims what they need to do, you have to go to the police, the traffic police. St uh, section department where you need to get a reference then the reference once you get the reference you go to the OC station where you get assessment forms After, when you get the assessment forms then you go to the bank when you go to the bank after paying then you take back the other seat mm -hmm. then the police can process your, your, your police report. All right, okay. Mariam, are we ensuring that that, before we go to step two, mm -hmm. are we ensuring that that um, process is kind of easy for people? Because I know many, like he said, drop out in that particular process, True. the back and forth. Are we trying True. to streamline that process of gaining a police report? Uh, the discussions are still on mm -hmm. in the process of amending this, this law. Because uh, we, we also believe that uh, this law is quite obsolete. 1989, yeah. it's, um, the procedures probably then were very easy. Okay. Today, those procedures are not easy. So the discussions are still on. Um, and we think that um, the IRA, the stakeholders, and the police, we shall come to an amicable solution so that the process is made easy. Okay. But one important thing. It's not the accident victim who will come and, you know, process all this. This person is already admitted in Correct. hospital. Probably this person has passed on. It's the relative who can do that. So we shouldn't always wait for the accident victim to heal and come and process. Even the relative can come and do that. But most importantly, if the owner of the vehicle is well aware of this, incident mm -hmm. it becomes very easy because remember the contract is between the first party and the second and the party. second party all right and not the third party correct so if the owner of the car is not involved in this whole process what happens if the, the owner of the car hard. if what happens if the owner of the car passes on Oh, if the owner of the car passes on, still the process will continue. Will, will, will continue. All right. Let's move to step two now. Report to the insurance company with the following. Now, number one, you need to go with a valid insurance policy. Mm -hmm. I think let's just stay there. Go with a valid, valid insurance policy. Now, in I'm, a, I'm a victim or I'm the next of kin to a victim. How do I access this? Um... Accessing the insurance policy that would, for, for motor third party, the policy that you're having is the sticker. The sticker of the car? Yes. But if it's a wreckage. Now you don't. Mariam, if it's a wreckage like what yes. we saw um, yes. in the YY bus, of course, there may be, hopefully, we can you know get off the sticker. Mm -hmm. But in that particular fire that happened with the tanker exploding, how do we access the sticker then? You're not going to access to get the actual sticker. Okay. Because now the police takes charge of this sticker. Remember the detail on the sticker is one. Is this insurance is this motor vehicle or bus did it have a valid insurance cover? Sometimes the vehicle is on the road but it is not having a valid insurance cover. Probably it expired. So it was not supposed to be on the road. Two, it has the detail of the insurer. This is the insurance company. Now, when you have the sticker, the sticker is with the police. Definitely, that becomes property of the police. Of the police. Yes. And that's where you can still get those details from. So all that will be highlighted in, in the, the police, police report. report. OK. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'll ask you this question. Yeah. Now, in the event like this particular um, tanker that exploded, mm -hmm. um, cars were burnt 
beyond rec recognition. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the stickers cannot be retrieved, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So do we have a system that the police can refer back to? Of course, with the number plate, you're able to see the number plate. Do we have a system um, where police can run, you know, the number plate and it shows who mm -hmm. the insurer of that car or vehicle was? Do we yes. have that? Yes. Uh, it might not be a, a system, but uh, the beauty about, um, say, the fuel tank, say the YY buses or the the buses generally, most of these buses have comprehensive Covered. insurance cover. Okay. And with comprehensive insurance cover, for, for example, for the bus, they are covering a fleet. And remember, it's a company. Mm -hmm. So definitely, if it is one bus that has been involved and it has been burnt down to, to, to total, like you cannot recognize it anymore, it means that uh, this company has the details of where they're right. insuring okay. their, so, their, their fleet. All right. So the other document that you ought to have is a valid identification. You also have a police report like we talked about in mm -hmm. step one and a medical report and bills. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mbabaza, you are the one who interfaces with people, with this act accident victims, helping them through these processes. How easy is it to go through step two? Uh, step two, it, uh, once you have you have secured the the police report, it has all the details. It has the details of the uh, insurance policy. Uh, it has the details of the driver, the owner of the vehicle, those who are injured, and then for you, what you need is just to attach this uh, the valid ID. Mm -hmm. Then you attach the the medical. Uh, report f which is form three which you normally obtain it from the hospital and then the bills so when you visit on the step two of visiting the insurance company the first thing they do is check on your police report the the insurance sticker and they first check whether it is valid once it is valid and they confirm that this was their seat sticker and it was not uh, it was their sticker, then they opened up a file for you. Mm -hmm. The claim form which the victim can fill and then the, the claim starts. All right, okay. Yes. And there's a caveat to this. Now, in case of death, they need to go with a death certificate yeah. of the victim and also a letter of introduction of the beneficiary of beneficiaries. Yeah? Why are we saying that this is critical? Have we had cases where um, fakes yes. <laughs> go to claim? Those are very many. Very many, you Very say. many. Um, when the insurance regulatory authorities started working with uh, stakeholders, uh, we noticed that the number of fraudulent claims that are going into insurance companies. That's why I told you, with a police report, it will clearly state who the beneficiary is. Mm -hmm. Other than the motor third party claims, other people are claiming that they died those who usually take life insurance covers, they say they, they, they claim to have died and yet they are still living. Mm -hmm. So the death certificate clearly states that Mariam died. The letter of introduction is sometimes picked from the LC to confirm that this person was, yes, buried Correct. in this area. Mm -hmm. So that they don't get a number of people coming in to claim. Remember, the maximum limit for paying out a claim is one million. Okay. Which is, I know many people are going to talk about it. It's, it's very, very low. Mm. But uh, at that point in time, 1989, that was some good money. Today it's not. And uh, the IRA and the stakeholders are all looking at this, and um, we shall have a discussion ahead. So that's the that. maximum limit? Yes. One million? One million. When are these amends going to take place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, yes. 10 million aggregate. Now, if it's um, uh, one million is per victim. But what you need to also appreciate, the one million is not exactly what the insurance company is going to be paying. Of course. Uh, medical bills can go up to about 600,000. So the insurance company will pay you 600,000. Don't say, we saw Mariam on NTVs <laughs> talking about We one want million. our one million. No, no, you no, have to not, prove. No, you have to prove that it is it is it is not more than one million if it is above one million then you can get in touch with her 
owner of the vehicle, the, the statutory payment is only one million. What will, the, what will the owner of the vehicle do if it's above one million? If, if you if have bills going to 10 million, we had a case right here, of course, you also in the news where we had a victim saying that, hey, I've been locked up in hospital because mm -hmm. I could not clear my bills. Yeah. So if the insurance company is saying that, uh, here we have a victim with 10 million bill, yeah. the insurance company can only compensate me with 1 million. Yes. And you're saying I contact the owner, the owner of the yes. vehicle. This owner of the vehicle mm -hmm. paid the insurance that party knowing that, hey, in case of an accident, it's off me. So what <laughs> happens? What should he do? Yes, yeah, this person can go ahead and contact the owner. If you got to appreciate how much the owner pays for, 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 for motor third party, you will then appreciate why they pay one million. Mm. Um, a car, for example, a taxi, pays about 150000 That's for motor third party. Now, um, there is a VAT, which is 18%. Yes. There is a, a levy, uh, which is a shared to the, which is remitted to the Insurance Institute. Mm -hmm. There is a stamp duty. There is a sticker fee, which is only 6000 mm -hmm. Now, this person is basically paying about 90000 as insurance premium. Now, insurance premium, if the accident happens, they have to pay, say, if it is a taxi, mm -hmm. they have to pay um, 13 millions. Correct. For all the other victims that are in the car, or if, even if there were five, but you only paid 90,000. So, yes. It's a gambling situation. It's not gambling. <laughs> insurance is not about gambling. No, no, they no, no, no. Balancing, balancing those numbers. Because yes. um, insurance works with the law of large numbers. Not all the vehicles that have paid motor third party are mm. going to be involved in the accident. Mm. Uh, in the in the accident. Mm. So when one vehicle gets involved, yes, the victims need to be compensated. Okay. And in, in, in the issue of um, the law limits, it's quite touching. It's quite touching. It's uh, it's like uh, Sam was explaining, coming from Chisoro, going to Arua to get a police report of eighty-four thousand, right. come back to Kampala, process the claim, the time, the money. I mean, you may it's even you may even forget some of the expenses that you incurred yes, to in process between. in between. All so, right. as IRA and stakeholders. In terms of the limits, that's one of the we, 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 that's one of the things that are we're looking at. Numbers that you you know you've gone through these processes over and over again. You're saying that 10 to 15 people um, were able to get aid thanks to you, um, your, your your company, the Hope for Victims of Traffic Accidents in the country um, in the past two years. How robust is that process? We've gone through the process of claiming for victims. How robust is it? How long does it take? Question number two. And what are the gaps that you think they need to work on? They're working on amendments. What should they um, put to the fore as they're working on that? Uh, as an advocate for road crash victims, I would request that maybe if we can have a, a waiver on the uh, traffic police report, that would encourage more people to access, access the report, like right. the way in other cases. That is one waiver on this. Mm -hmm. Then two, uh, in this new project which we are pirating with the uh, Uganda Insurers Association in partnership as well with the support from the regulator, they have improvised. They have uh, there are some of the requirements that have been uh, amended now. For example, in the case of an accident, in the case of this. Uh, the process of getting a death certificate through NIRA is very hectic. Mm -hmm. So we have discussed with the Uganda Insurers Association that maybe the police post-mortem report may work in this in this case. Correct. And then um, the letter also this we should have the letter of uh, a state from the from the director general. Yeah. Yes. Now that one is no longer there. Now you, the, the family can have a meeting and get minutes and sign, and then you'll be able to access. Within this project now, we want to make sure that uh, the victims, who, those who are hospitalized, can be able to meet the hospital bills, offset the hospital bills before they are discharged. Right. Now, the, the, the regulator now that we are working with the regulator, it means the insurance companies are going to be, co to be compliant. 
Yes. Okay. Because there is a refrigerator in place, uh -huh. and then even their membership, the, this umbrella group. So it means the, the insurance now in this project, they are saying for us we are ready. Even from starting from today, okay. whoever has been involved in any crash, and he, he can approach us, can approach the refrigerator, has information, can approach the Uganda Insurance Association. We are going, we are, we are trying to make a foundation so that we work with. We shall. We are prioritizing it with seven major hospitals. Okay. We empower them so that the the medical workers who deal with the patients, with the relatives, can have this information right. and can be able to advise. Before I go to Mariam and I just uh, throw to you the questions that are coming mm -hmm. through, people are wondering why isn't IRA ensuring that this information um, becomes one of the pivotal points, entry points for all these insurance companies that offer this kind of cover to the masses. But before you answer that, um, Mr. Mbabaza, so what we're saying, how long does it take ideally for a common person, not someone who is under hope, a common person to go through this process and finalize their claim. Roughly, how long are we taking? Uh, it depends. It depends. For example, now you, we had this case of uh, why, why, yes. where it happened in Mbare, and maybe you may find I come from Rukonjiri. So then maybe you may find I stay in Zambia and then accident happened in Kabaragara. So, so logistics and all that come into play. Yes, but. Uh, uh, once you get all this documentation and you file, you have all the requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, most of an average insurance companies take two weeks to pay you. Two weeks to pay you. Yes. Wow. All right. The other question that is coming through for you, Mr. Um, Bambaza, is. Um, how do people access you, number one? Um, what criteria do you look into to help victim X, Y? And um, what is that particular relationship? What's your take home as an institution as well? People want to know that. Uh, for us as an NGO, we are advocating for improvement of post-crash and then uh, and, uh, the promoting the rights of road crash victims. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office in Zambia. And now that we have uh, signed an MOU with Uganda Insurance Association, they have our contacts, they can uh, access the information. We are going to engage in the, our mother ministry and the National Safety Council so that they can also be able to avail this information. Uh, for us, is to ensure that the victims access have the rights and of which maybe we can discuss the rights okay. of the victims. We'll get into that as we wrap this up. Yes, uh -huh. so okay. for us, is we are advocates of for, the, road for the right. victims. All right, okay. Mariam, answer to that critical question. Um, uh, people are saying, and I'll just... Um, quote one person who is saying that um, why does AIRA wait until such gaps are there? Why is it not, why is IRA not ensuring that all the insurance companies comply with that critical step of educating the customer who comes to pay for that third party coverage? Um, IRA is actually um, should I say becoming tougher and tougher every other day mm -hmm. to the insurance companies. Uh, one of the market conduct regulations that we are having now is that um, when the insurance company is issuing any policy, mm -hmm. it should take through the client. Yes, we do appreciate it's not been the case before, but with the enactment of the Insurance Act. We are having an insure, a new Insurance Act in place. Mm -hmm. The number of regulations that are coming up. Now, no insurance company is going to be issuing a policy without taking through a client and specifically on what should I do as a client yes, or as a policy that. holder mm -hmm. in the event the accident happens in the event the uncertainty happens because the role of an insurance company is to settle claims. Yes. So if you don't take this policyholder, this client through that critical um, stage, then you cease to be doing your work. So the IRA has already put in place guidelines. These guidelines and regulations are being uh, finalized okay. and uh, this will see that uh, uh, this information is going to trickle down to the policyholders. Two, with the information still, IRA is carrying out a number of uh, awareness programs. Of course, awareness 
is 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 something that is continuous. Mm -hmm. We, we've talked about motor third party for a number of years, but still you see the information gap is huge. Correct. So we still think, yes, we still have a lot of work to do as IRA, but also the insurance companies are put to task to continue sensitizing their clients to ensure that at least by the time they issue out a policy, All right. the client, the policyholder is aware of the nitty gritty of the policy, not just about selling. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mariam. Once that is sorted out, I'm sure a majority will be happy and um, it's going to change the status. It will. It's it going to change the status of uh, matters to do with compensation yes. in the country. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mbabaz, as we come to a close, I want you to point out to the rights of accident victims um, in a nutshell. I'm giving you one second. Okay, thank you very much. The three rights of road crash victims, one, they have a right to be informed whether the vehicle was uh, insured. Uh, second, they have a right to be compensated mm -hmm. under the Motor Third Party Act. Then thirdly, uh, they have a right to sue the owner of the vehicle or the driver for the body injury on uh, property loss or death. Okay. So that is where the area of somebody has knocked you saying insurance is going to pay you. Mm -hmm. This is under this uh, under their rights, they have a right to sue you. Okay. All right. Mariam, just in addition, yes. they also have a right to lodge a complaint with the insurance regulatory authority. Okay. In the event you see the insurance company is taking ages. Mm -hmm. You've got a discharge voucher, you've submitted all the documents, IRA has a compliance bureau, the services are free, you just walk in, state company A gave me a discharge voucher three months back, two months back, two weeks back, and they're not settling all right. my claim. You have a right to lodge this complaint with the IRA and the insurers association so that we can have your claim and compensation effected. Thank you so much for coming in studios. <laughs> if you missed out on this one, we're going to post this particular segment on our YouTube pages. So share, share, share. We all need to know that we have the right to be compensated just in case we are involved in a road accident in one way or another. All right, so get all that information and share with your family and friends. Thank you so much, Miss Mariam Nalunkuma. Yes, the communications um, boss in IRA, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the insurance regulatory authority right here in the country. And uh, Mr. Sam Bambaza, he is um, the team leader from Hope for Victims of Traffic Accidents. And he says, just in case you get lost in the way, you can access them and they will be able to help you out. So that's it for our Kickstarter conversation. And at this point in time, 812, we want to know how the roads look like. And I do have Mr. Stephen Bede with me and he's coming to you from uh, Entebbe Road, Zana area. Good morning, Bede. Good morning, Mala. Thank you so much. Yes, this is in Tebe Road at this particular place called Zana. This is just eight kilometers as you head towards Kampala city center. And if you know you're coming from any of the, these neighborhoods, just know that, yes, I'm here at Zana, just overlooking on the my right the International Special Hospital that is right here under construction. Of course, we still mourn for the over 30 people that perished in road accidents over the weekend, of course, over 20 in western Uganda, the place uh, that's just near Lubirizi, and of course those 10 in uh, the side of Namutumba who perished in a, an accident that also involved a bus axe, a bus that belongs to YY. This morning I thank you for being uh, choosing us to be part of your morning uh, wherever you're watching us. For